Hello friends of .NET, I'm Emma Landworth and you can find me on Twitter at TerraJobs. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview over the changes that we have made to our product planning in the open. So in the .NET 6 timeframe, we published this website called themesof.net. And on this website, you can effectively find our product plan uh, as we have it. And as probably many of you know, our product plan is on GitHub. So you can find all the items on GitHub. But uh, the challenge with GitHub, of course, is we have, I don't know, five orgs, several hundred repos. So the information there is a lot more distributed than you probably want. The other challenge with GitHub is they don't really have a notion of any sort of tree or hierarchy, which is super vital for product planning. And so what this website basically does, it gives you a view over those items that make up the product plan and you know removes all the noise, if you will. And so when it comes to the product plan, we basically have three kinds of issues. We have this thing called themes, which are the big rocks at the top. And then when you drill in, we have epics. Uh, and then within that, we have user stories. That's kind of the, the hierarchy that we use to break down the product. Um, and so what this website basically shows you, these are all GitHub issues, right? If you, if you click on any of them, uh, they're just regular uh, uh, issues, right? So if you click on them, you can find, yep, they are just marked as epic. They're in some repository, in which case this is the core repository. And then there's just, you know, effectively a task lists that are linked to particular issues, right? That's, that's how we uh, basically do that. Now, um, when it comes to this website here, it just shows you that state from GitHub effectively, but the added value is that it gives you the tree and of course, easy searching. And so uh, the idea of this website uh, was that people understand our product plan. The challenge was that the way we present it is not necessarily the way you want to see it. So for example, these themes here are really, you know, from release to release, uh, the result of our top-down planning process. So our top-down planning process is basically our, our management chain decides, okay, what are the big areas that we want to invest in in this release? And in the very nature, they change release to release, right? So, you know, release six, we have these themes. Uh, the planning for .NET 7 has just, you know, barely started. And so we will have probably about the same number of themes, but probably the themes themselves will be very different. Um, and so that's not really necessarily as a customer super useful because unless you are involved with our, with our planning, uh, some of the, the terminology or the, the, the grouping may not make sense to you. So what we basically also have here on this website now is the ability to group by other aspects. So for example, you can also group by area. And so this gives you the same data, but grouped differently. So now it's grouped by product area. So you can see here's all the stuff that we do in the runtime area. And so themes are effectively removed by this view. The only thing we surface here are epics and user stories. And then they're just grouped by the product area that they logically belong, right? So if I want to find out what's, in, what's new in EF, I can click on that and I see what's happening here. So now you may think like, oh, that's not a lot. Well, that's because we filter out uh, open and, um, you know, I just have all these filters here. So if I remove all of them, then, um, you know, it's a lot more data in here, right? And it includes also completed items and stuff like that. Um, and so you can see here the milestones that we have. You can see the, the percentage complete, which is just the number of children uh, that are open uh, divided by the total number of children, right? So that's not... Um, necessarily like, you know, you know rocket science. Um, the other thing we have here is we have various things. You can, you know, see the teams and the areas here uh, that we use to just filter to basically give, you know, the EF team a dedicated view that only shows their items very quickly. And the product area may not be the right thing because you have a lot of cross-cutting things as well. So like the EF team might own something else that we own and vice versa, right? So. And anyway, so that basically gives you an idea of what you can do. You can also filter, of course, if you want to filter down, show me everything that the F team is working on. Um, then you get this view I just talked about and you now find that they are kind of like split across many different product areas. So for example, for nullable annotations or trimming, right? Uh, the parent items might be in other product areas. That is what happens with, with cross-cutting features. Now, as a customer, you probably don't care about this view either. What you really care about is but what is planned for a given release and what has been delivered for a given release. And so I added this roadmap view here, which basically does that. So if you want to, for example, know in the .NET 6 timeframe, what are all the things that we have done? So first of all, you see all the milestones here uh, on the horizontal and now you can drill in and say, you know, runtime, for example, what happened there. And you see, for example, okay, some of the stuff was planned before .NET 6, right? So for example, this uh, constrained environments thing was planned in .NET 5. 
and then we uh, started working on it uh, in uh, since preview one of six, but we are not done. We are still working on this, right? Uh, if you want to know what's what was actually finished, you can just click this checkbox and it shows you everything that we actually finished in that time frame. And now you can, for example, see that uh, the constraint environments thing isn't finished, right? But it has children that actually we did finish in this release, right? Um, so that's effectively what happens. Now you can also say, okay, let's say doing particular preview, what was actually changed in, let's say, uh, I don't know, preview six, right? Well, here's all the items that we, that we finished in preview six, right? And so again, like this is an easy way for you. you can, of course you have blog posts for that, but the idea is also that the poor person, which lander that has to write those blog posts would go on this page and actually filter down particular milestone and use that information to seed the blog post, right? And then talk to the right people to make sure that we showcase all the things that we should showcase. But then of course you can also do this forward looking. So you can select seven, for example, and you just find all the stuff that we planned for seven. Now seven doesn't have any milestones yet because well, <laughs> they haven't even really started planning for .NET 7 yet. So most of the, of the items you see here is just items that people just basically mark items now and say, okay, I won't finish in .NET 6, so let's punt it to .NET 7. And so the, probably the 7.0 uh, milestone right now will be eventually the RTM milestone that we introduce actual milestones like preview one, preview two, preview three, like we always have. And so that becomes a bit more useful, but uh, you know, that gives an idea of what's happening, right? Of course, very often you also care about what we actually didn't do, right? So if you want to go to six, for example, and say, Hey, show me everything that is, let's say cut, right? You can do that too. So this way you can actually figure out uh, what's happening. And of course, there's a bunch of filters here. If you want to know, let's say, uh, if your hero is David Fowler, like what, what did David Fowler actually work on, right? So here's all the stuff that is assigned to him and what's going on with that, right? So it is a pretty powerful uh, way to, to query the data. And you can see here the syntax is very much like GitHub. The shortcuts are like GitHub, right? So um, it should feel fairly natural to figure out what's going on. Um, and then if you don't like the grouping here again, like on, on this query page here, you can do, you can also group by, let's say, uh, parent. So you see the actual parenting structure of GitHub and you can see there's a bunch of epics that aren't rooted under themes. Um, and that's very often, well, because we do bottom up planning as well. So there's top down, which is basically what our management chain wants, which is all the themes. And then there's bottom up, which is what the individual engineering teams want to do in their own area, right? So for example, if one of my developers on my team who owns, let's say compression, wants to do something there that probably doesn't necessarily show up in some big, uh, in, in, in some big theme item. And so, um, it, it will show up here, but probably in, in, in some detailed fashion, right? So this is also the reason why we normally exclude bottom up items here. So if you actually remove those, you can actually remove all of them. If you just do this, then you basically get a sense for all the stuff that's going on. Right. And as you can tell by the scroll bar, there's a lot, right? And so that's kind of the reason why we have filters to actually make it a bit more approachable because at the end of the day, if we just show all the issues that are on GitHub, then the website doesn't add any value anymore, right? So yeah, I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think, play with the website a bit and um, yeah, maybe you find your favorite feature and you find out what status it actually is in. <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye.